let's turn our attention in segment three to Must See TV and Cedric. This, uh, this week and this stretch of the sports calendar, a lot of must-see TV revolves around the NBA playoffs. We're in the first round right now. And you're interested in this Clippers-Warriors series for a lot of reasons. We saw the massive comeback by the Clippers in Game 2. Obviously, Boogie Cousins looking like he's going to be gone an extended amount of time. It begs the question whether the Clippers win this series or not. Are we starting to see any cracks in the Warriors foundation? Definitely seeing some cracks in the foundation, Jen. I don't know if you saw 60 Minutes on Sunday. They spent some time with the Warriors midseason, and those guys, uh, I know that they, they, they look like they wanted to be anywhere but in front of a camera, particularly Kevin Durant, who just looks like he's really checked out. It's almost like he, he, know, he knows he's a free agent. He knows he's going to be out of there. He had like six or seven shots in that game. That's inexcusable for someone who – who uh, you've seen very closely light them up. We both have. Uh, I think that there's some turmoil in that locker room with Kevin Durant and Draymond Green. With that said, I do believe in my heart of hearts that the Warriors are still the best team in the league. They're going to still win this series in five or six games. They'll destroy the Clippers the next time they play them. And then they're going to they're gonna set their sights on someone, on some bigger fish. Uh, definitely kind of gives the league the other teams in the playoffs like Milwaukee and Boston, uh, even the San Antonio Spurs and the Rockets, they have to be buoyed by what happened there. But let's not get it twisted, Jen. They were up 31 points. To blow a 31-point lead, you got to be up 31 points as well. So the next time they're up by by big big numbers, uh, let's let's rest assured they're going to put their foots on the Clippers' throats and close them out. So uh, the most talented team usually wins. Boogie Cousins is not going to be back, but they smartly signed Andrew Bogut three weeks ago, and he's won a championship with them. He knows this, their sets, and uh, he's going to provide enough of a presence inside with Kevon Looney that the Warriors will be okay. Yeah, and I think the margin for error that the Warriors are playing with is so much bigger than most teams in the league. I think it shrunk a little bit when they lost uh, Cousins, but – you know, they just have so much talent, so much ability. They can so quickly recover from uh, a couple turnovers with a couple threes. Their margin for error is just so much bigger than most teams are dealing with, which brings me to my part of must-see TV. And I don't know, maybe this is the opposite of must-see TV. It's the Thunder shooting woes, Cedric. These guys, uh, through two games with the Trailblazers, making just, not, making just 10 three-pointers, the Blazers have guys that are almost matching that at this point. You know, they, the Thunder shoots 15% from three in game one. You think it can't get any worse. It doesn't get worse, but it doesn't get much better. 19% from three in the, in the second game. Talking about margin for error, this is a team with a very small margin for error because they don't have the shooters that others around the league do. They're going to have to be better defensively. They've got to win game three at home on Friday night. But, Cedric, this was a series that when, when the playoffs started, people thought that the Thunder might be the team without home court advantage with the best chance to get through the first round. Now, they don't win the third game. No NBA team's ever come back from a 3-0 deficit to win the series. They look a lot more likely to get swept if they don't win game three as opposed to actually winning this thing. It's crazy how much has changed in a week's time, a series that people really felt could favor the Thunder, now has gone the complete opposite way because of their shooting woes. Well, you see Paul George over on the bench with that big ice pack on his shoulder in the first quarter, and you're like, man, this guy's beaten up, and he's trying to make shots. He's trying hard. But you know what? I, I, I know that they didn't play well down the stretch. I saw I saw uh, Barry Trammell's interview with Russell and the next question, next question stuff, and uh, he's got the uh, PR people over there scared to death, and uh, he's running that thing. But I'm going to tell you, when this series started, I wrote in the Statesman that the most overlooked backcourt in the NBA is Damon Lillard and C.J. McCollum. Those are little guys who are great. They've been great for a while, a couple of all-stars, and they can shoot. And they're making shots, and the Thunder are not making shots. Uh, McCollum and Lillard are pure shooters. People talk more about Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, but you look up into the Pacific Northwest and check out those numbers. Those guys are quality guards. Uh, they don't, they're not great on defense, but they score like nobody's business. 
I think the Thunder is in big trouble uh, with Paul George is banged up, and I think they need to get Stephen Adams more involved when he's when he's playing downhill and dunking on people. They're much better because it kind of uh, opens the floor up for Russ to drive. And uh, so far, so good for the Portland Trailblazers. They seem to be deeper. They seem to be fresher. And most importantly, Jen, it's a make or miss business, and they're making shots, and that's why they're winning the series. Yeah, those superstars for Portland outplaying the superstars for Oklahoma City without a doubt. And it's interesting to hear some of the uh, conversations uh, from Portland. You know, that the, the Trailblazers have really had postseason struggles the last couple of years, and there's a thought that some Blazers uh, pundits, both uh, professional and amateur, say that they needed to split up the backcourt. They needed to figure out a way to, uh, you know, probably keep Lillard, but because McCollum's a very similar type of player, very similar size. You mentioned their defensive shortcomings, which haven't been as obvious in this series. But, you know, there's been some talk, do they need to split up that backcourt? But after the first two games of this series, they look like the difference instead of the problem with the Blazers. So it's going to be interesting to see how that evolves as this series evolves. Blazers have held serve. Now let's see what the Thunder can do at home. That happens on Friday night. Lots of fun NBA action coming this weekend. But uh, Cedric, that's it for us this week. That's it for the Riders block. So we hope you'll join us next week. Playoffs will still be in full swing. We'll have lots more to talk about. Thanks for joining us.